And you gotta talk about what, Black? Gotta talk about, I, gotta, I gotta talk about how I got hit on in Nashville. Somebody I hit you? To... No, nah, nobody ain't hit me. I said hit on. Hit on. I'll say it. Big facts. 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 I'll... It took it took me a while to realize what was happening. <laughs> they was trying to they elaborate. Was trying to elaborate. Him elaborate. Him they was trying to set him out, and he was going with it at first. <laughs> oh, it was a sneak attack. Really? Yeah, man, it was a sneak attack. Okay, I just okay. caught that vibe, man. I just really, I really caught that vibe. So what y'all get into? What, what y'all get into on Friday, man? I missed. All right, so on Friday night, man, we came in kind of late, so the the, the 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 thought process we're gonna go down here to Nashville Strip. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna go kick it like that. We just gonna go eat. So we went to this spot called Acme Bar. They had fried chicken. We go up and there be some chicken. We go up to the rooftop. When we get to the rooftop, I notice I sense a vibe in the air. I sense, I sense a little sugar, a little sweetness in the air. You know, you know, but I ain't paying no attention. You know, so you know, I'm posted up on the wall. My wife says, "Hey, I'm about to go to the bar real quick." All right, cool. So I'm chilling, listening to some music. I see a couple of guys on the dance floor dancing to Michael Jackson. They getting it. Two guys dancing <laughs> together. I think over here on my right hand side. It's like uh, you know, it's four girls and it's one guy, and you know he's kind of you know he's dancing to Michael Jackson, and then you know I'm just drinking my beer. So the dude comes up to me, he's like, "Man, you're buff. You flex for me, flex for me." I'm like, "What? <laughs> said, Man, you're buff, dude. You're buff." He comes and he feels my arm. He puts his arm. Oh, what's your name, man? I said, "Man, what's that? My name, my name D, man. What's your name, man? You know what I'm saying? You know." And then uh, he's like, man, nice to meet you, man. You know, you're buff, man. You're, you're, what, what did he I noticed at not one point you mentioned pause. Yeah, yeah. I was, why, being, why, why, I was, I was, I was just why? being nice. I, I, you know, I, I was just a hard conversation. Again, I'm not yeah. knowing what's going on. So that's where, you know, where I'm from. And he says where he's from. He said, man, I really like you, man. Why are you not, why are you not out here talking to any girls? I'm like, what? Me. Embarrassing. I throw the arm. I throw the elbow out there. You must be available. You must be. You must be out there in the street, right? Throwing, throwing out his line at you. That's what it's song like. That's exactly what it's song is. I'm gonna get me a stud at the night. He's like, oh. Hey, he said. He says, oh. He says, oh. Okay. You're a smart man. And then he walks off. <laughs> Once I told him who I was here with. <laughs> I felt so violated. I had to tell you really wanted that booty. Got hit on that. Wanted that wanted man. Y'all just, yeah. y'all just ended up at the wrong was, spot at the wrong night. His name was Fitz. Y'all were, even were there any the rainbow thing. flags around? Was there any rainbow no, flags no around? Rainbow flags. Only you know, the only flag that was flag flying was a Georgia flag, Georgia Bulldogs, since they tapped that ass against Vanderbilt. They, they were trying to tap that ass. They, they were, they were making a test. <laughs> Chill out. Chill out. That's that's night one. That's day one. Day two, we get a, we get a chance to meet old Mr. Nike Newell up there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Tell them what happened. What's Nike Newell doing? He comes in with his his, his UK sweater on, got a little chain showing. You know what I'm saying? He strolls up on, he creeps up on me. I didn't see him coming. <laughs> you recognize him, Nike? You recognize him? Yeah, yeah, I seen him back there. You know, I, you know, he he telling this story about about this dude was hitting on him. You know, I was, I, 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 he's what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> We eat, we go, we go to a, a, a bar called what was it called? Old Red. Yeah. What's the name of the name of Old Red? Soon as yeah, we get in the it. bar, a, a drunk girl comes up. She starts talking to myself and my wife. She really started talking to my wife. Ooh. She just drunk. She's okay. talking about she being kicked out of three, four bars. Juicy. You know, because she fell asleep at the bar and then she tried to give some underage guys a drink. <laughs> So so Brian, you know, he, he you know, he just chilling. You know, he vibing to the music. The white the girl, so she's she's a little tipsy. 
And I said, hey, why don't you talk to my friend right there? He's like, she points at like, him? I'm like, yeah, talk to him. He's, is he single? I said, very much so. <laughs> Super single. She goes, she goes, and she starts grinding all over, bro. Oh. oh. I had to hold drunk him up. Dad. The oh, drop down. Big, big fella. Yeah, she was, she was kind of knocking me, knocking me down a little bit. What? Dragging that little booty up. Oh, oh what? Look. <laughs> this, this is a big girl? Uh-uh. She's a little short girl, but, you know, just... Yeah, she's a little short, a little stocky. You know what I'm saying? Had what, a little drunk booty on. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So 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 she he, she's dancing and stuff, but apparently, like I said, she she couldn't go to the bar. Her, all her bar privileges has been revoked. The only so, way, you know, the only she, way she kicking it is at the house. Now nah, she had to go. She had to send in her uh, her secret agent. <laughs> she had to go. <laughs> she had to send in her top draft pick for the night, which was Nike New. Go handle that. Oh. Fuck. While he's at the bar. She comes back to myself and my wife telling me, man, I love him. I'm in love. I was like, oh, wait a minute now. I said, do you even know his name? No, nah, what is his name? <laughs> you not even got that said, part. How you love him? You don't know his name yet. What, what? What, 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 you didn't ask him for his name? Nah, you didn't have to. Him, she though. was grinding on him. She learned everything she needed to know with the grind. Oh, Lord. You know, she know my true name. But I will say this. I will say this. It was an episode that we had, and he was telling us that he ain't really got to say too much in Nashville. All you got to do, all you got to do is look and, and, and get that knock. What up? No. <laughs> hey, he did that two times, and he's winning with it. That's all he even got to say nothing. He's like, look, the whole night he's just looking, gazing in the crowd. You see one? What up? Oh, me? Man, I literally, we literally saw the last chick. I saw him in action. I saw him. He was looking. I said, B, what the fuck you doing, man? He's like, man, over there in the red. <laughs> Just imagine like a gazelle in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness. And you see that lion stalking. Yeah, that was in, in, in the high grass. <laughs> he said, right there in the red. And I said, oh, I made our cut today. I mean, I saw. And then he just he did it, and she said, "Oh, who, who me? You want me?" I'm like, yeah, come over here. And she comes, she spits through the crowd. She got to get there. She's on a hustle, and she's just smiling. So. But the, the biggest win was she was a local, right? Oh, nice. Everybody right, else good. were in for like the weekend. They leaving out Monday, leaving out Sunday. She was a local. So that right. was like that was one of the crazy things that I was trying to tell y'all about. It's like you got to figure out where you're going because if you go to all the regular spots where everybody's going, most of the people that we bump shoulders with, interacted with, is gonna be gone in twelve more hours. Back. So right. when I was with Black, you know, put put up some numbers. Like let's say we talked to. Uh, four girls, you know, just because got three numbers, and then one girl was like, I'm not from here. So, like, it, that's really the whole game, but then it it just gets tiring, like, being in a tourist city, just going out and, like, recycling, because uh-huh. everybody's gone. I think yeah. we need to give Nike Newell a new nickname. <laughs> Any takers? Black, you were no. right there with him. You should get first stab at this. Oh, with your oh, experience, man. with Nike oh. Newell in the streets of Nashville on the strip, what is his new call sign? His new call sign? Oh man, I don't know. I don't know why Mr. Sniper Game is in there, is in what? my head. <laughs> that is a very the reason why I was saying that is the reason because he, you know, the whole night he was just gazing. I'm like, man, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> like that, man. <laughs> At one point, at one point in the night, he hit this move on me. <laughs> he had his eyes up. He looking like this. I'm like, Pete, what you doing, man? You need a spot. You, man. You need a spot. All right, I'll he take that. One. I'll take that. Yeah, he, he just, he, he, well, he, what you say, Bear, from this story? What, what do you what you want to coin? What do you think would be a good coin? We gonna let the we gonna let the audience vote on these three. 
suggestions? I'm suggestions? trying to think on something good, like like you know, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm I'm scat man. I don't know. Move. <laughs> <Get back. laughs> oh. Dang. Oh. We'll so think about it. I mean, you and Robin. We'll, <laughs> we'll think about it, but I'm really glad Black got to see what I was talking about in person. Uh, first in real life. It's, it's just different. It's really different. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take a stab at this. I'm going to take a stab at it. And just off the top of my dome, I'm going with the uh uh I got a couple of going in my head. What's the main one? Let's see. I'm 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 gonna stick with this one. All right. I'm gonna stick with this one. Pole vaulter. Pole vaulter? Yeah, he's he's jumping over the room and he's landing on the one over there. <laughs> <laughs> The pole baller, but I, I really like I really you know sniper, sniper, sniper game. That's, that's a good one too. You know, that's, my, that's that's my usual loadout, so that's what I'm. Gonna, we can do that. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna start the show with that. Uh, here we go. Pole bar, sniper game. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Saving for the Mic. We are here. Well, I'm not here. Today I'm I'm a demon. Today I'm Beetlejuice. You got a little boo-boo on the side of your face. I'm Beetlejuice. <laughs> you like he's been, like he been eating it. Hey, it's our Halloween special. And as you know, we like to come with the spirit of Halloween. You know, everybody ain't got to do it. You know, some people don't think pagan holidays are fun. You know, we can be fun and poke fun. But anyway, fuck it. I'm with my boy Nike Newell, a.k.a. A.k.a. Mr. Sniper Gang. There it is. <laughs> I'm with my boy Black Sand, a.k.a. A.k.a. D-Nat, D-Skittles. And, and, and my, my, my partner's partner, Unicorn, is in the building, a.k.a. That, that is my AKA unicorn. That's it. <laughs> and Batface bringing it in with the solar shades. The black super saying up in here. All AKA, right. you already know Mr. Weak pull out game all day, every day. And I'm Renaissance, AKA Beetlejuice, AKA the Black Stifler. That's what I was. I was, in, I was single in Nashville. You know, might might have been a fun. That might have been a fun trip. But you know, oh, my yeah. blackness makes me scared of that. I don't know how y'all Can we get the child? <laughs> nah, man, it's not. It's it's not. It's not even like that. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, we could have. We we, we could have went to a couple more spots, but like black. When I when I went up and talked to that one girl, he he thought I was gonna get mobbed, right. beat up, from other dudes. But folks is just so cool. Oh, yeah. Them I other dudes, I mean, they, they wanted to talk to me more than she did. Yeah, but you know, yeah, I, I'm hearing all good things, right? I'm hearing all these good things about kicking it and picking up ladies and the entertaining of it all. But Tennessee has a history like you, that, that they don't come up when you out. No, because for one of the reasons, a lot of the folks, one of the reasons is a lot of the folks that you meet is not from there anyway. Yeah, they're not local. Yeah, Tennessee's got a history, but like that's not Nashville. Like you might find Tennessee history out there in Cookville, Knoxville, like out there in the sticks, but it's not like that in the city, man. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a city center, and it yeah. acts like a city center, like Dallas, it's, it's Houston. A, yeah, it's a conglomeration of everything. Like I wish, um, here I'm a, I'm a Atlanta. I'm a, Atlanta is I'm a city a, center. There's a lot of black people in Atlanta. Different. They have a good it's time, different. but when they leave Atlanta. It's different from Atlanta. It ain't yeah, all man. black. It ain't a lot of black yeah, people it's, in it's, it's, it's interesting, man. Um, See, come on, be blunt. Tell us about your town. No, I'm just saying, it's, 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 it's just like it's very diverse, but not in like a a certain way, man. You go to the, the, the west side of town, it's different. You go to the east side of town, it's different. You go to the north side, 
you can go a mile away from where we was kicking it and it's going to be completely different. So, yeah, when, you also, say, when you say different, you mean sundown? No, no. I mean, you might go to the black clubs. You might go to the white clubs. You might go to the hoedown. You might go to the honky tonk. You might go to the college bar. You might go to the biker bar. You might go to the rich people bar. You might go to where the young college folks hang out. You might go to where the old heads hang out. Like, it's just so many different areas. Everybody's got a spot. I like and the party. With, TS, I like the TSU, party, TSU is one of the HBCUs in Nashville. They was having their homecoming, so we even saw some of them out. Yeah, they have a good homecoming at Tennessee State. They have a good homecoming. Yeah, but, but, but Jack State had their homecoming too, and we took an L. Took an L to to guess who? Ooh. How many of y'all watch HBCU HBCU football this weekend? No, I haven't watched any oh, HBCU football. I wait. I was I was in None. the streets. Jackson State University lost to Alabama State at homecoming last year, just like they beat ASU last year. At ASU for their homecoming, so they, they got paid back in a last minute comeback last uh, this Saturday. Um, so it was a tough game. Who won that Tennessee State game? Did they did they schedule a tough team, or was it like a pushover? You, you didn't watch it. It's, you know, it don't be about the games. It's about wow. what's going on before and after. Yeah, but I wanted to make this point and say this, man. In Nashville, it's all love, man. Even though he's he's saying like you got different bars that have those different genres. It's all love. It don't matter what bar you step in. You may step in that junk that joint, and somebody want to buy you a drink, or somebody just come up and talk to you and start making you feel welcome. Man, it's all yeah. Love. It, it, it's real hard to feel out of place. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Well, everybody, you got an endorsement from two of the four of us, five of us today. That see. Nashville might be a fun place for some S- some people. Speaking of, it ain't no might be. Speaking of, come up and pull up. Let's talk about Antarctica, man, because I, I got a couple. I was questions. just about to go to that, you know, because it's cold. It's cold out there. It's cold out there, just like those cold white legs. We we said we were talking about Area 112, and I Googled it. I couldn't find nothing. So, all right. So who knows anything there is to know about Area 112? Because I had never heard of it, and I didn't find anything either. I did try to do some research. Does anybody know anything about Area 112? Mm-hmm. I have some questions about some other stuff, but maybe we'll start there first. I, I think we should start with what we know. Let's talk about what we know about Area 51. Can we go there? Because I, I honestly, I have questions that y'all might have answers to. And then we got what they said on in, in Congress. Military man came. He said, Congress, yes, we have biologics that were flying those aircraft, and we have the aircraft. He definitively said that without anybody going, that's a conspiracy theory, blah, 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 to Congress. Uh, Any comment? Where, 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 is, where is the aircraft being stored? And you say, yeah, we have an aircraft. Where is the aircraft being stored? They were talking about Area 51. So it's in Area 51. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what everybody know about Area or think they know about Area 51. That's where they house uh, unidentified flying objects or beings. So my the question only thing known them to produce was the uh that stealth bomber. That's the only thing we know to actually come out of there, not a UFO. So well they tested it there, they built it in, out here. Yeah, they tested it there, they built it out here. That stuff. They got like statues of them all along the airport about out this way. Oh, but the, you uh, yeah, in this in the city. They got we got two major uh factories here. We got Lockheed Martin and North of Drummond, and they build those fighters and bombers. And I'm not saying the city because I don't want this place to be bombed because <laughs> we're about to go to World War Three. I think Area 51 is just a bunch of knowledge that the government don't want us to know. Well, remember, it's Bob Lazar, no, oh, it's a literal base now. Bob Lazar came out years ago and he's still to this day doing interviews revealing the little he he knew and he confirmed that they were putting out UFO and had a, a you know you extraterrestrial technology. Well, I thought that microwaves came from Area 51 as well. Like the actual microwaves that we use to heat up our food. 
I believe oh, so. Some guy from Area yeah. 51. Yeah. I'm not sure. I believe so. I'm not sure. And the and the uh, data they use to find out how to to sustain a laser for long distances. I thought that came from there too. And I also read that uh, Worldwide Web came from Area 51. Uh, just one quick clear clarification that microwaves came from um, a guy trying for radar applications. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't there, though? No, it was Raytheon. Raytheon. The company? Yeah, the other defense contractor. Yeah. So it could have been on any other military base. What about lasers? If So this is not a side note, but have y'all seen Israel using that, uh, that laser weapon to shoot down missiles? Yes. Hmm. What's it so, called? Star, star uh, line it's, it's, it's called the iron laser iron dome no the iron dome is the rockets that they shoot down the iron they, laser got an iron laser yeah okay and it, and it costs a uh, hundred kilowatts uh per shot <laughs> they said so, so so how i'm gonna say how what is the range on this laser anybody know that I thought uh, lasers I were. I thought they were continuous. They they only just dissipate. No, lasers break. Laser, lasers break range. in the atmosphere the further they go because you don't have continuous energy to feed it, and you have other interference. So, right. I, I don't know the the actual applications for the laser distance, but I know they're using them both in tandem because you know something you might have fog, you might have bad weather, and the laser won't be as effective. Effective. <clears throat> So, so that laser is putting out so much heat and intensity that it's destroying the the warhead inside the rockets. Yeah, I, I love technology. I love futuristic stuff. I can't wait to be have lightsabers and this is the laser I'm rifles. Just drop back. I'm gonna just draw back real quick. You gave Bear some 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 flack over saying that's what they used to set Hawaii on fire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I gave him some flat. Mm -hmm. How did I not believe it? That's different. You said what? I said, did I give him some flack or did I not believe it? You didn't believe it was possible. I didn't say it was, I didn't believe it was possible. I said, I didn't think that they did that after you seeing the video it. of the transformer in the woods blowing up and catching everything on fire. Okay. Which is why they put the blame squarely on the power company and the power company is being sued to nothing. Yeah, everybody needs a little scapegoat, but I, I agree with that too. They do that often. So just like I don't believe, just like I don't believe they, they, they too much. They huh? got too much anomalies happening with that whole bushfire thing. Okay, they got melted steel, which bushfires don't get hot enough to do, and a bunch of other anomalies going on with, with, with that. You should look into what's happening with Hawaii. It's a lot of yeah, how, how did usual things happening, happening. Okay, how this the, the I, fire ain't even burned. The, the path of the fire and where these fires happen don't even make sense. Well, then we got a lot of scattered transformers erupting at the same time. Then because no, no one that, did not do this to Hawaii. I do believe that uh, powers that be will take things like this, take full advantage of it, and rip people out of their homes and take their property. That that's we know they've done that. We know that they've burned towns and buried them under lakes. All right, so we know that white power structure has done this before. They have no problem moving people out and destroying everything they have to I get what they own. They did it to the Indians. Them. They did it to black people so many times. They did it to Asia. They went over, saw fireworks, and turned them into guns. I mean, in Africa. Did it to Australia. It's they done it in Africa so many times. Africa is still they're happening doing to this day. And still to this day. So, so for what but, reason but back, would we... Back to the, huh? No, I'm saying, y'all, th those are all good points about actually, like, there, there, there's... you People would get something from that. But for what reason is there to put a base of any kind in Antarctica? That's what I was about to right. ask. Well, there's so much secrecy in Antarctica. What what is being hidden there? Because it ain't like it's just open to the public, you know. So, what, what is being hidden there? 
right, so. so so this area 112 is supposed to be a hidden base is what I'm I, don't know, man. I, Googled it. I don't think area 112 exists but I, I do believe there's a lot of activity happening in Antarctica and I know for a fact that um, warming the planet only benefits the greedy because they've been trying to get to the Arctic which is the northern hemisphere for the longest because they found they know that there's oil in the Arctic so I would assume that it's something similar there's a resource in Antarctica that they need to melt the snow for to get to or there's something there that they need to melt the snow for to make there. it easier to get there there's something there there's, there's I mean it's the same reason why why they don't go to the moon Right, they stopped going to the moon because they wasn't nothing to use. Now they find water. We need to go back to the moon. So whenever they start going places like Antarctica and places where it's really hard to be, it's something there. There's got to be something there to, to to dig up and find. What y'all think about that? Uh, what a, like a, 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 think, a prison there base? Something there, but think about it. They they put it in places too where it's, it's harder to access. It may be a prison. Or weapons, maybe some more nukes, maybe a forgotten society. A forgotten society, yeah. I mean, this so, so I'm reading an article, it says Antarctica has never been permanently settled by humans, there's been historically little military activity. But the military treaty, which came into effect on June 23rd, 1961, bans military activity in Antarctica. And I don't see it here, but I think that lasts until 2041. So, why, if, if that bans military activity and all this other stuff, why do why are there bases? Why are there people doing operations? Like, what's the point of the treaty if people are still operating there? I mean, I'm looking at a news clip now from BBC saying Russia's Arctic military base. You know, when they, they, don't play by, they don't play by nobody's rules and laws anyway. They sure don't. They got their own agenda. I, I shared yeah. uh, I shared something to the portal. It's a pyramid they found in Antarctica. It's massive. All right, That's I pulled cool. up. You but guys, that, have, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, but that 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 right there just leads me to okay. If Russia has a military base, you already know. Other countries have done the same thing. Well, in case you don't know, there is the Antarctic Treaty, which consists of every major country. I don't see how they can be warring out here, but they're all peaceful and can work together in Antarctica. Almost every major country is in Antarctica working side by side. But you know, you, the Antarctica you know, they also work together in, um, in uh, space. I mean... The ones well, that actually every are country has, has, a, has, a, has a space program. Very, very few countries have a space program, but yet every country is damn near. You might as well say, yeah, pretty much every every major country is in uh, Antarctica doing whatever research that they're doing. It's crazy. And it's close to the public. But I was going to ask you, any of you guys ever heard of Admiral Richard E. Byrd? No. Nope. Yeah, no, you told me about yeah. Admiral Byrd before. He gave some some accounts of of his missions to Antarctica and uh, the Arctic Circle. He was on a, a, a show called the Long Gene Chronicles, and he gave an interview where they asked him, "Is there anything left in the world for us to adventure? Is there any new any land left to find?" He mm -hmm. says, "Not in the North Pole. It is crowded in the North Pole, but." In Antarctica, uh, you know, past the South Pole, he says there is land as big as New Mexico, where there's lakes and it's about seventy degrees, and there's there's Greenland past Antarctica. What is he talking about? Admiral of the U.S. Navy. And in case you don't know his resume, this guy was as close to Superman as you could get in the nineteen forties. Superman, you hear what I tell you? He was Superman caught with a little bit of Indiana Jones. If you watch his resume, <laughs> all right. So, Mr. Bird, 
has been to Antarctica, comes back, tells the world that there's a large land mass that's warm and and there's animals and all that, and nobody goes to confirm what he says? Well, at this point, a year after is when the Antarctica Treaty is formed and Antarctica is blocked off to, to the public. So no regular researchers can't go down there and, and, and do any research because they're all blocked off. If you get you a, a, a trip to Antarctica, you, you, you do a, a skim of the surface. It's like saying you went to Miami Beach and seen all of America. That's, that, that's how much of Antarctica they let you see when you take so, a trip there. So who's in uh, Antarctica stopping people from going to Antarctica? Military forces of, of, of various type. Depends on which coastline you try to breach, on which it depends on where you try to enter. Gonna depend on which forces you meet. There's been people documenting their encounters with these forces as they fish too close to Antarctica. They get encountered by military forces that push them back. Yeah, oh yeah. So so wait a minute. So you're saying military force. So is there a particular country or is it, or is it like a different variety of country? Uh, or, I haven't uh, seen or no one country. particular. Like, uh, I haven't seen any one particular. Uh, I only seen two videos of two fishermen getting encounters, and these ships, they just look like like you know military grade ships. I didn't see a, I didn't see a flag that they were waving. You know, they just look like military ships. They got guns on them and stuff. And definitely not something you want to piss off. All right, I have the uh, video of the. YouTube video of uh, of the pyramid in Antarctica. Um, I don't know if there be. Wait a minute to share audio. Share a tab instead. Okay. All right. So let me take this over here. I don't, all right. So I think I will have audio because of the setup. All right. Let's we'll do this right here. How much do you think a plane trip or plane ticket to Antarctica would be? You're going to land at what airport? At who airport you supposed to be landing at? Well, there's not an airport in Antarctica? No airport? No, bro. Anybody that made a trip there did it by water. Anybody that did it, did it by water. Any civilian that is, did it by water. Ain't nobody land. flying over there. Land where? Where you going to land? Antarctica International? No, that, that, that don't exist. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Y'all ready for this? What is this? By the walk into a bar. Say it with me now. If something has a point and a square base, that does not mean that it's a pyramid. The base isn't even square. They literally just drew the line to where it would be the most convenient to stop. I am genuinely concerned that the human race has completely lost the ability to have any critical thinking. The ice covering Antarctica is like three miles thick. Why? Would there be a pyramid under it? Oh, my Lord, it was an advanced lost civilization. They're, they're hiding under there. Yeah, he's no, an idiot. Not. It's goofy and you yeah. know. <laughs> what's going on with this stupid pyramid conspiracy? When mountains experience extreme and repeated glaciation, it creates things like this. As glaciers continually scrape the sides off, it leaves one it's little point the at the top. Mountain that we the mountain in the Alps. That what would this look a, like if it was a, on a okay. continent that's... Does he not realize nobody ever mistook that mountain for a pyramid? Right. That's what I'm saying. History, like, okay. History Channel even did a special on that same image that he's showing. Okay. I don't know why he feel like he should, he, he has the knowledge to debunk it when the History Channel has just said the damn thing. Is yeah. There. So, audience, we're not going to listen to an idiot with long hair that probably just smoked a bomb. What we're going <laughs> to do, though, is look at this ice covered pyramid that I showed in the very beginning of that picture, right? And analyze that. Now, I'm still looking at it. I can put it up again. Let me find a better picture of it because I think now, now I... before we analyze this, are we analyzing this with a ask with a uh, mindset like this is a secret base, or are we debunking it? Well, like what are we doing if we're analyzing this? Well, we we've yeah, already debunked the, the whole secret base thing across the board. We all did that right off right at the beginning because nobody was able to find anything on 112. And all we know about Antarctica, Brian, you muted. All we know about Antarctica is that I could um, not, we couldn't find anything on 112, but there are multiple abandoned military bases in Antarctica. Right. I was about to say right. that. I was about to say that. 
I, well, I, what I was going to say is that we already agreed that there's military forces on an article. Like, I, I was able to pull up a, a picture of Russian base really easily in an article. So I'm not, nobody's denying that there's bases in Antarctica, right? You you say Russian yeah. base. I just looked and I saw that as a, there could be a possible secret Nazi base there. Ooh. Nobody else pulled up a Nazi. It's base. well documented that the Nazis were in Antarctica, though. That's not surprising. The Nazis were looking for ancient artifacts all across the world. They, they were looking for all there. They could. They, they very there creating, creating super soldiers or something. But, but the reason I said that this young man was an idiot in the video is because anybody that has studied the history of our mm -hmm. planet would know that the Arctic was not always frozen. Thank you. So it's very likely that a pyramid could have been built in ancient Earth, and it's very likely that you might even find bones and 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 human humanoid uh, lit remains in Antarctica. Is it possible for Antarctica to be covered by three miles of ice? Yes, that sounds like a lot. Why? Why do you think that that's too much? I mean, three miles. The ice. ice wall is over like twenty. Some. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess that is. Mm, yeah. Hmm. I mean. But I mean, I'm, we talking about the same idiot though that made that statement. I don't. Well, that's why I'm asking. Do y'all think that's possible? Like, do you think that's true? No, three three miles before you get to how 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 did he get that number? I don't, I don't know. Who's the geologist involved in this? It ain't how, him. It ain't the dude the in the white in the white team. How did we get this the, number? Who went up there and measured how, that? How can the ice shelf melt? It, I, I think, or, or crack. I think it's got to be a certain. I don't know what, but it, if it if it can crack, it's got to be like what, uh, twelve thousand feet, uh, twenty thousand feet. So really, maybe they're trying to dig and see what's under it. Oh man, Ren, you're gonna like this one. 40, 4,700 meters deep at its thickest point. 4,776 meters deep. It averages 2,160 meters thick. And I think 1,000 is a kilometer, am I right? Man. Looks is like 1,000 meters a kilometer? So he's right. Looks like somebody found it on Google. No, uh, a kilometer ain't 20 miles. No, nah, but 4,700 meters is three miles. Right. That ain't 20. He said 20. That's as no, deep as the five. ocean. There's mountains that ain't that tall. No, no, he said three. He said three miles under there. He said it was buried three miles under the snow. No, long hair, white shirt said 20 miles thick. Long hair, white shirt. I think you. I think you said that, but we'll move on. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, so we we did put this one, guys. Somebody just found that same pyramid on Google Earth while he talking like it ain't real. You, I, I put it in the folder so you could so you could. Man, just start listen. sharing this stuff, man. You putting too much on me. I'm trying to enjoy myself. Share it. Where, where you want me to put it? Just share it at the bottom and say present. Use the present. Okay. But I, I, I have a confession. I can't see a damn thing, bro. I ain't gonna even like I can't see it. <laughs> like, you got the blue blockers I mean, out. Bro, I've been struggling over here. I can't see a damn thing. Oh yeah, man, man. I'm, I'm on my second glass of scotch over here, man. I can't can't keep doing this. I'm gonna get dizzy. <laughs> hey, but you know, we bringing this up about these secret bases, like and and, and then when you search for it, it's, like you said, a plethora of things come up, but like I just got one talking about a UFO hunter said say that there's a uh, they found an alien base near the coast in Antarctica. So this goes back to I think somebody who had a theory on that NASA live saying that aliens are under the ocean or here on Earth. So if that holds true, then that you know I don't know how how true that story is. I mean I didn't. But I didn't doubt that they were under the ocean. I just, I was just saying they didn't come from the ocean. I doubted that shit. I, just, I, I, I can believe. 
<laughs> if you can make a spaceship, you should be able to make something that can be underwater. If you can make a spaceship, yeah, it should be just as airtight and and capable to go underwater. That, so they, that does not. But no, but there's the the water does the water is what presents the pressure. Mm -hmm. So we're right. saying the pressure of the water is so greater than the deep. vacuum of space. It's, it's, so it has deep. an opposite effect, actually. The vacuum of space wants to pull the thing apart. The pressure of the water wants to push everything in. Mm -hmm. But if you can withstand one, you should be able to withstand the other. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The other one might be your kryptonite. The opposite to what you built that for might be your kryptonite. But, Bear, you telling me you smart enough to make a spaceship and you ain't going to think that it might land in water? I, I ain't saying that. What I'm saying is that spaceship ain't prepared for everything this, this universe got to offer. It got something out there it don't want. That ship don't need to encounter. Magnetism? Gravity? Who Black knows? Holes. Who knows? There's something, you know, the, the ship ain't invincible. But even humans, even, even us in our idiotic form and idiotic way of thinking we thought let's build an airplane that can sustain the pressures of high elevation right but in the event that it lands on water here goes some flotation devices motherfucker was thinking about that you can't tell me that the alien who built the fucking spaceship that can fly from one part of the universe to another didn't think we might land in water on a water-rich planet what about the alien where water is something that just is non-existent in their universe. H2O ain't elements that even exist where they're from. You tell me they have nothing in liquid form on that planet? That's going to the, present the same amount of pressure? You, you, you think everything is carbon-based life form? What about a hydrogen-based no. life form? What, That's what, what, you, what you say? What? I say you think everything is a carbon-based life form? What about a hydrogen-based life form? What, what are their requirements? What they are nitrogen? Sustain? Our nitrogen base are they Would still they gonna have system? liquid form or somewhere in their system? Otherwise, they're gonna be some rock people without where well, they don't need water. And which they probably exist too. I, I, I think see I one. think all I think all extremes exist. I'm not disagreeing with you there. But my my point is that if they were smart enough to come to this planet, I'm pretty sure they knew that they had plenty of water on it. Right? When you assume that, I would. I don't want to assume anything. I would. I would hope they know that. You huh. would expect them to know to know such things. You know, know where you're landing. Don't don't look before you leap type of thing. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. So, so uh, my whole thing is, if they could build a ship that's so advanced to do everything that we can't do right now, which is go into outer space and survive. Right. We can all agree that we can't do that yet. If they're that advanced to do that, I I would like to think that they are also you, you can survive in space because you're Vegeta. Okay. Don't, make, <laughs> don't, don't, don't make me put these back on. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is plenty of conversation. Did anybody have anything else to say? Because I can't bear to think of what Bear's looking at with his glasses. It looks I can't painful. see money. I can barely see the screen right now. I know. I know wow. one thing. Everybody can't be Brian in Nashville. No, I, and that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> hey, I had a similar that? mood. You, that? <laughs> you remember? You remember my move, Black? You remember my moves? I would just do like this. <laughs> what's up? But I had to have my hands up. Like, what's up? And then they'd be hey. like. <laughs> but you know the old version of him would be the old version of him would be very would be winning in Nashville. The old version of Rand. The the Rand I if, know. If that were him standing across from Red, he would have hey, oh, you would have yeah, you would have you would have the trumpets. I'd have been the one cutting through the through the audience. I'd have been the one cutting through the crowd. Yeah, that would have been that would have been a sight to see. That would have been a sight to see. It's fun though. Girl, gotta, I want to see your dick shoot. We got to get everybody <laughs> up here to do a do a little show. Yeah, that would be tight. Off a, yeah, off a, off a roof. 
All right, I'll give it a try. Next time I'm out that way, I'm going to come out and visit my nephew and see what the strip talk about. You know, I'll be a good guy, though, because I'm a good guy. I guarantee you, if you go to that strip, you're going to come back with some type of story to tell. I thought he was going to say with crabs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought that's where he was going, but that, that too, if you don't protect your neck. Nah, I'm Not good. That kid, he's strapped. Hell, that may be one of the stories you got to tell. No, <laughs> no more stories for me. Nothing. Anyway, no, ladies and gentlemen, anybody. Anybody I don't know if you general. got. I don't know if y'all got anything from this story other than the fact that we know shit about military bases and even less about Antarctica. But I still was enjoy. I still enjoyed the story and, and the talk. Man, I can't wait to hear more about Nashville. So be on the lookout because we're coming out with another episode. That'll air on Thursday. You'll get this on Monday, so it'll be the 16th. And guess what? You can find us anywhere where podcasts are available. That's everywhere where you can watch, listen to a podcast. If you want to watch us, catch us on Spotify. You catch us on Facebook. Catch us on YouTube. And guess what, y'all? We're always available at contact us at savefortheMike.com. And don't forget, we got three new name opportunities for Nike Newell. You guys Make that decision. Hit us up on contact us at uh, savefortheBike.com or in the comments uh, of this show. And uh, we'll be right back in a few days. But anyway, we out. What that beauty? Yeah. A lot of people. Hold on up, Branson. You're right, mate.